Hey everybody, it's John from 9142 Props and Armory in the shop today with Henry today. Hanging out, we're working on something and uh, you probably don't know, I started playing around with Fusion 360 in the last couple of weeks and have played around with a little bit, made a couple of things. I'm working on a new Star Wars costume that I'm going to wear to Star Wars Celebration in April in Chicago. It is a Mud Trooper from Solo, A Star Wars Story. There was a part of the costume that no one had done yet, so I wanted to start with a, a baby step, so to speak. One of these. Now, this is a spa your standard issue Imperial Space Grenade. I'm sure it has some name, although it hasn't come out quite yet, but um, this is one that is shown uh, in the scene in Mi on Mimban, when Mimban, 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 however the fuck you say it, and he's wearing it, and it is attached to his armor on the front and the shoulder. So I took a screen capture, uh, put it into Fusion, and modeled up the grenade. And here it is. So I decided what we might want to do is go ahead and, and take this grenade today and make ourselves a nice mold of it so we can make copies. Here's the rub. I got out my $150 kit of Umu, which is Umu 30, which I've had for a while now. And when I opened it, I opened up part B first, mixed it all up, still looked good. And then when I got to part A and opened it up, shit. Can you leave more now or still? That's going to be a problem. Right, Henry? This is junk. This is $150 that needs to go into the garbage now. So this is crap. Can't do anything with it. So, so what if we do this a different way? So let's jump into Fusion quick and see if we can do something with this model. I have a bit of a crazy idea. Printing. So 3D printing the mold. I've seen a video, some photos here and there of people doing small molds. Now the thing to remember about mold making is that you, if you're making a mold and you make it out of something hard, you have to cast something in there that is soft or flexible. We are going to make some of these out of a semi-flex prop foam from Brick in the Yard out of Texas. And what we're going to do and what we're going to be able to do with these guys is they're going to be soft. We're going to put an armature inside of there so that they're not too soft and flexible. That way these can be used as part of our costume. And if you want to wear your Mud Trooper or some other Star Wars armor, and you want to take this and be able to throw it at a con or when you're screwing around with your friends or you're at an event or whatever, you can do it and it's not going to break. So let's look at the mold quick. So we 3D printed this mold on my CR-10. So we showed you in the video before a little bit about the files in Fusion. Basically what we did is we took the model for this and then I made a block. And I took the model for this, I put it inside of that, I removed the model, and was left with a negative. So we have the negative here, we split the negative, we put some pins for orientation in there, posts for orientation, um, and put a relief hole in there for a vent hole. And then when the, the mold was done printing, I think I printed it at a .24 layer height, I printed it pretty fast. So I needed to smooth things out a little bit on the inside. So much the same as same manner in which we would we'd fill it, finish a, a 3D printed part, a final part, filler primer, sanding, um, a little bit of other filler used in there as well, just to smooth things out. Okay, so we've got our mold, we've got two parts, 3D printed. Let's go ahead and make a casting from it. All right, so in order to make this prop foam, flexible, 
grenade that we're going to do here, we need a couple things. We need a soft, flexible foam, and this is Prop Foam 10 from Brick in the Yard in Texas. Um, it is a two-part foam, expanding foam, and it does expand about, uh, in this application, it, it about doubles in size, a little bit more than that. Free expanding out in the open, it will expand more, more than that. This is a 10-pound density foam, meaning that for one cubic foot of finished material, it will weigh 10 pounds. They also have, I believe, a two or a four pound density uh, available as well. Um, we needed that. We needed some colorant for uh, the urethane expanding foam. And then we also need some kind of a release agent. The first step of molding one of these um, is that we have to put some kind of release agent in there and that we have already coated this really well previously. Put a little bit of spray of that. so that we have the mold prepped. Now the thing of this is, is time is of the essence here. This stuff, once you mix it up, you get about 45 seconds before it starts to expand. So in that 45 seconds, you need to get it completely mixed. You need to get it into the mold. Yes. <laughs> into the mold, get the mold closed, lock down, clamp down, and ready to go. And also get our armature in there too so that we can go ahead and not have a cast that's a mess. This does not have oil Alright, so we've got our mold prepped. The armature for this is going to be very simple. It's just a piece of PVC pipe and what I did is I ran a wire through the length of it so that I can leave it on the inside here. So we have a wire through the armature so that we can hang that on the inside here. And what we're going to use that for is we're going to use that to give us some rigidity in that handle. Also, too, it eats up some volume so that we can use a little less material when we cast. All right, so here's where the fun really begins when it comes to doing this stuff uh, with the flexible foam. You need a couple things. You need the foam material. You need a good scale that weighs in grams. You need a cup. We need to mix this stuff up. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to pour our part B. And it's gold. Our part B is going to go. And, and it's white. And, and this is golden. Love when something just falls over, you know, like my roll of paper towels behind me. I thought something died on my printer. This particular uh, two-part foam it has a very low odor to it. We do have the windows open up behind us. We have a fan on. Uh, we have good ventilation in here. Um, so nothing to be concerned about there. Uh, you can certainly do this outside. This foam likes to kick a little bit better when it is a little bit warmer, around 80 to 85 degrees if I remember correctly. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and make this foam black so that when we have our completed part and should something happen where it gets scuffed or a little piece of it gets taken out that we don't have white showing white foam underneath. Alright, so Henry's going to help me mix this up. This part is so why it's good to have an assistant. It's good to have an assistant with you. Oh, look how black that thing is now. Alright, nice and black. So we got a good black color in here. We got our dye all moved in nice and well. We want to get everything off the side so it's down and in there. On. We're not quite ready for that yet, little dude. Yeah. Okay, our gram scale is ready. Uh, this particular stuff is mixed uh, 100 parts of part B to 40 parts of part A by weight. The thing you have to have ready, the things you have to have ready here, you have to have your clamps ready. Because you got to seal this guy up as soon as you are done, right away, and be all ready to go. We have our mold ready. We have our material almost ready to go. The last thing we were going to do is put that part B in there, measure that out, mix it up, and then we we're going to dump this in here as fast as we possibly can so that we don't make a big mess 
and that we don't have a failed result in molding. All right, so we're ready to go. As ready as we can be. We got to be ready to go, Henry? Yep. All right, so we got to be very, very, very quick. Dad, you forgot that we didn't add this yet. We, I know we haven't added that yet. That's the last thing we're going to do, dude. Alright, so we have this. It's already it's been pre-tinted in the part B. We have our part A ready to go here. We are going to mix this up. And again, have everything set how you want it to be and how you want it to go. Because you don't get a second shot at it. If you mess it up and don't get the mold closed, you're going to have a huge, ridiculously large seam line on there. All right, so we ready for this, dude? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. All right, and we are on to the bones. All right, so I'm going to set this up so hopefully you all can see as well as possible what I'm doing here. Okay, we ready to mix? Yep. Ready to mix. All right, we're going to do it. All right, so do me a favor. Hold the stick up like that. Okay, I'm going to pour this in here. And then you're going to let me have the stick. All right, here we go. The clock is going to start as soon as we pour this in. we got a less than a minute. And there we go. Mix, mix, mix. i got to mix it, dude. There's no time. All right, that's good. All right, pour it. Yeah, please. All right, into the mold it goes. Yep. And so you gotta wait for so you gotta wait pretty long for this to be done. Pretty long. All right, we've got our sides together. We get our armature in here. We get our top on. And now it's time for the first before we put it together. Hey, look out, dude. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually turn this over. Um, then first I've got to add some tape. The tape is really Okay, we've got our sides together. And what I'm going to do here for just a moment is I'm going to hold my finger over the end so we get a little bit of back pressure in the mold. because we want everything to fill out as nicely as we possibly can in there. And we have to be careful of the back pressure in here because it's a 3D printed bolt. We don't want to let too much stay in there because then what will happen, we'll get too much pressure in there and then actually we can start doing damage to our mold. Yep, and you don't want to damage your mold. Too well, much heat, too much pressure in the mold is obviously going to be a bad thing. And, and my fingers are So we are getting a little bit coming out the side over here, so our parting line is not going to be perfect. Um, but at the end of the day, it's going to be what it, it is what it is. Um, they, we can always trim things and clean things up. Yep. Alright, so we got it in the mold. Uh, demold time on here is about 30 minutes. So we're going to shut things down, we're going to come back, and we're going to see what our result was with the Prop Foam 10, casting up a Han Solo grenade from uh, the Mud Trooper armor kit. We're back. All right, we're back. Had some lunch, waited our 30 minutes so that we can begin the process of demolding uh, our part from our 3D printed mold. So we're just going to go ahead and take our clamps off. grab a nice sharp razor and go ahead and trim off whatever has poked out through the side there to make it a little bit easier to go ahead and get that out. Trim off our flash on the outside of the mold there. 
Now the thing you're going to miss really when you're casting something um, in a 3D printed mold versus in silicone, obviously there's going to be a couple things you're going to miss definitely. Um, the biggest thing though for me is the fact that we don't have the flexibility that you obviously have with silicone. So getting something out of a silicone mold is going to be inherently easy for a lot of different reasons. First being the fact that really nothing sticks to silicone other than silicone. So that makes it easier. Uh, the other thing is that you have flexibility in your silicone mold so that you can distort and, and warp that mold a little bit to help work a part out. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a screwdriver um, to go ahead and start to work around the edges of this guy so that we can get our part out. How it turned out. It's always the moment of truth when you crack open that mold for the first time and see what you got. So there is our first half. Yeah. Mold released. Nothing left stuck in the mold. Came out very clean. Yeah. That's because, um, the, that's because the mold sucked it up. Yeah. Well, what we did is we smoothed out that mold really good, as good as we could with what we have available to us here. Um, yeah. And, and through sanding and, and priming and, 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 and all of that. And on the sides, like they're sticky. I took the one hand and then the So really what we got to do is we just got to kind of go around the edges here and release the sides. There's no undercuts on this guy. To speak of, it's a pretty simple part to pull out, but again, we have a mold that's completely rigid and really, to a degree, doesn't want to let go of that part. They are cool. All right, Henry, I'm going to let you do the last little bit there. Okay. So come on up here. Pop that guy out of there. Nice. Nice. Look at that. All right. Now we've got a good amount of flash on there. That's okay. A razor blade will trim that off really easily. All right, so completed cast. Turned out very, very well. It has the armature inside of there so that it does have some rigidity. We are a little bit thin in one or two spots uh, where our foam is a little bit light, which is less than perfect, but that does happen. Uh, all right, so here's a couple examples that we've cast already and that we finished already, trimmed and, and painted. Um, did a couple different varieties. Here's one that has no armature on the inside of it so that you can see kind of how flexible the Prop Foam 10 is. It is still very soft. Right, Henry? Yeah. This is Henry's favorite one. Yeah, because I want it. Because <laughs> he wants it. Um, it is flexible. And here are a couple we did with armatures on the inside of it. And as you can see, he's whacking me with it. And it's not hurting that badly. All right, yeah. enough. <laughs> enough. It's enough. Okay. Um, here are some with armatures inside of them so that we don't have that flex in the handle. Um, but we still are soft enough. We take one of these and we go ahead and we toss it over there. It does not break. So if you look at one of these guys, you look at this one actually, Henry. Um, when they are trimmed and painted, the finish on there is very nice. Han Solo grenades cast in a 3D printed mold. Yeah, I don't know what would happen that way for this. They're soft, flexible, and a print and 
model of something that I designed in Fusion 360 using reference photos, screen captures from the solo movie. All right, real basically on the finishing on there, um, all we do with the finishing on there is you take a nice sharp razor blade and go ahead and trim your flash off on there. To paint them, what I used was Plasti Dip. And actually does a great job of sealing the foam and giving it a consistent color. So there's one that has been Plasti Dipped. It is rigid. Henry has had these things for a while now. He's been throwing them around. He's been smacking things with them. It is a very good finish on there. So we did it. We did something different out of necessity because of uh, a failure of a material that is our standby for making molds. So 3D printed molds, you can do it. All you need to do is take your model and do a little bit of work in Fusion 360 or whatever your CAD program of choice might happen to be and create that mold and go ahead and cast something in it. So this was a learning experience for me. I figured I'd share the information with you all to show you that it works, that it is doable, and that it does lower the cost of making molds for short runs. Silicone is expensive. If you're going to make a block mold of this, a two-part mold with silicone, you're looking at $50, $60, $70 in silicone material, unless you're buying it in extreme bulk quantities, which I, I do not. That's about the biggest that I will buy in right there. And for short runs, for limited use, it is excellent. I made a mold. So, for more information about materials that I used, I will have links down in the description to where I got the Prop Foam 10 from, um, links on other things that I used in the course of the project, like the finishing materials, the mold releases, some of the other stuff used as well. If you go ahead and make a 3D printed mold and cast some parts out of it, I want to see what you do with it. Please let me know. You can hit me up on Twitter. So that's it for John and for Henry this afternoon. Well, don't throw that at my phone. If you want to throw it over there, you can throw it over there. There we go. It's Henry proof. It's John. It's Henry. Uh, go ahead. Do us a favor. Like the video. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not. Leave comments down below. It's, I'm it's usually it's pretty it's good not about... The flexible one, and it's not the printed was on before. Throw it over there. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. You ain't going to break it. <laughs> so it's John from 9142 Props and Armory, along with my partner in crime here on the weekends, Henry. <laughs> and thanks for spending some time here. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Use those links down below. It does help support the channel. Hopefully this is something new and you haven't seen it before. So there you go, guys. Also, too, the model for this is available um, on Thingiverse. I've got this and another project that I did as well related to the Mud Trooper build. So if you want to go ahead and download that, print it off, uh, please do as well. It's available there for you free. So it's John from 9142 Props and Armory. Going to shut up now finally and get back to work because we got a lot of stuff printing on all the printers behind us that we got to work on and finish up. So have a great week. See you soon.